Oh man, today seems like such a good day. I think I'm gonna check on how some of my videos are doing. Oh, what's this? My Let's Play video has gotten a couple more views. Let's see how good it's doing. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Alright, now I don't want to make it sound like I'm complaining or anything, but where did all these views come from? <laughs> Like, I am grateful for this, but I'm genuinely curious. What happened in the Let's Play Webtoon community for this resurgence? Did the Webtoon manage to become Breaking Bad the Webtoon? Or did it manage to become the most disgusting Webtoon in existence? Seriously though, someone tell me. Anyways, I did say I would come back to this Webtoon eventually. Not only did I see reviews saying the Webtoon got bad, but comments for my video backed up those claims. I'm honestly kinda terrified. I remember this being the one Webtoon I read that didn't make me want to take a shower afterwards. So the downfall of this webtoon is just gonna break my heart. However, I doubt I'm gonna be seeing that downfall in the next 10 chapters I'm reading. Anyways, with that being said, let's get right into this video. We start off this episode with the pizzeria workers talking about why the League of Legends crew is so terrifying. Basically, they're so good at gaming that they won all of their prizes. They wonder to themselves where their guildmaster is when all of a sudden the Giga Chad is revealed to be the guildmaster. I can't believe this. Matter of fact, I refuse to believe this. A League of Legends player cannot be buff. Let's see who you really are. I knew it! The Giga Chad, whose name is Abe, reveals they managed to become the number three guild in their server and wants to treat them. He gives a special thanks to Edgar, and we're shown Edgar's stats. Can't lie, this is a pretty funny bit. Now we have two guys fighting for the title of the best character in this webtoon. Everyone starts gaming, doing their own thing, when all of a sudden Sam receives an email about her account status. In a perfect world, all of the Markiplier stands reviews are ignored and her account status returns to normal. But we need plot, so obviously this is only going to be sad news for Sam. After an admittedly funny moment from Abe and some disrespect to the common working man from Olivia and Edgar, Sam is outside after hearing some bad news. Olivia then goes outside to talk with her after hearing about the whole situation. Sam tells her that while her account is reinstated, her score remains the same. Olivia then suggests to brutally torture Markiplier and Sam obviously refuses. Bro, what is with Sam's friends wanting to mutilate Markiplier? Like, I get he made a bad review, but that doesn't mean that they should go out and jump this man. Olivia straight up tells Sam like it is and tells her to keep on fighting for her dreams. Honestly, I like this. She's not just comforting her, she's inspiring her to take action. It's what we should all do when any of our homeboys are down. They can't stay sad and gloomy forever. They have to get up and fight, otherwise the world will eat them alive. Matter of fact, let me interrupt this webtoon review for a brief message. Guys, if any of you are down and don't know what to do, please get up. I don't know what it is that may be troubling you, but you cannot sit down and expect the world to wait for you. You know what you have to do, so get up and accomplish your dreams! After hearing Olivia's inspiring speech, she goes over to Markiplier so everything can be made right. However, instead of Markiplier, a girl opens the door. Wait a second. A star and the color pink is a part of her design? Ah! No way! It... it's... <laughs> the woman thinks Sam is a fangirl and intimidates her, but Sam tells her that she's just his neighbor. She apologizes and completely changes her attitude, even complimenting Sam on her looks. She eventually gives her a card, and it's revealed that her name is Monica, and she's a beauty vlogger. I guess that's cool, but I'm just hoping it's not revealed that she's completely hideous under all that makeup. Markiplier eventually comes over to ask Monica for help to take off some makeup she put on him for a video. Because Sam is a super introvert, she tries to run away, but Monica ensures that doesn't happen. Sam comes back, and Markiplier tries to properly introduce them to each other. Despite the fact they're obviously dating, he doesn't call Monica his girlfriend, which makes her feel murderous. Mark asks Sam what she wants, but seeing that her introvertness is activating, he finds a way to get her out of the conversation. After Sam leaves, Markiplier says he doesn't want their fans to find out they're dating since it'll cause some backlash. It turns out Sam was eavesdropping, and she knows for a fact they're dating. She then has an evil look on her face. Look man, all I'm saying is blackmail is illegal. Ah! 
After the pizza dinner with the guild, Abe and the 4chaner have a conversation with each other. Just as the 4chaner is about to smoke, Abe stops him. He proceeds to tell him that smoking is bad and his family will be very disappointed. W w wait a second, they're brothers? How? They don't even feel remotely similar. Back to Abe though, this guy is so cool. He makes sure his friend doesn't indulge in an activity that could negatively impact his life and that's awesome. This guy is great. PLEASE don't tell me his character is ruined or I would be crushed. For some reason, Sam has a nightmare where she's in the hospital and she has a controller in her hand? She wakes up from her nightmare, and to calm herself down, she takes out Bowser. She goes to the park with Bowser, and all of a sudden, she hears these two girls simping over a guy. She goes to see who they're talking about, and it turns out to be Markiplier. Impressive body, Markiplier, but you still got a long way to go to reach the peak male body. The two girls are dying over Mark's body, but Sam disapproves? What's with the Reddit downvote, Sam? You think my dog should be skinnier? Seeing that he's getting closer, Sam goes to hide somewhere. After complimenting Markiplier, the girls for some reason talk about his feet. Wait, no! They're spreading! <laughs> no, we have to stop them! I'll take out their leader! After noticing Bowser, Markiplier comes up to Sam. Markiplier tells her he can't spend his entire life gaming, and he has to work out. Very good message, Markiplier. If only some other people would be like you. <coughs> yeah! Mark asks her what she's up to, and she's clearly infatuated with his body because she's stumbling with her words. Look, I get it, my dog's irresistible, but how do you mix up simple and nipple? Anyways, Mark asks Sam what she really wanted from the night before, but right before she's about to tell him about the game, he's spotted by fangirls. Run away, Mark. I'll buy you some time. <laughs> Sam thinks about what happened earlier with Markiplier and his fangirls. They are absolutely enamored with his body and his feet. They look at Sam, ready to pounce on her if she's his girlfriend. Well, it looks like Markiplier was right. If either of their fanbases found out they're dating, it'll only end in war. After a bit of pestering from the girls, they hug his sweaty body. After remembering that, Sam snorts and excuses herself to the guy sitting next to her. What the hell? After that whole interaction, she realizes that Mark's fans and Mark himself love each other mutually. So that means she'll be going to war if she says either one did anything wrong. Sam walks into work right on time to see Lucy flirting with the delivery guy. Bro tries to get out of there as soon as possible, and he accidentally spills coffee on Sam. Well, Sam, that sucks. But it could have been worse. After the coffee spill incident, Lucy apologizes, saying her limitless riz is what caused the delivery guy to spill the coffee. Lucy then suggests that she should let her sweater soak off and just work with the tight tank top she has. You know, I'm sure there's a gift shop or a Walmart nearby, why don't any of the workers just get a shirt from there? Oh, right. Fan service. Sam is uncomfortable working with her tight shirt since everyone's staring at her like she just screamed the N word. Charles uses his boss powers to call her over to a room privately. He tells her that her attire isn't appropriate for the workspace as it is very distracting and. Oh nah! What in the. Is this? We cut back to Markiplier talking with his fans, and they tell him they trashed a game he didn't like. After hearing the news, he goes home to verify if what they said was true, and finally he sees how awful his fans are. Good luck trying to calm them down, dog. They do not seem that reasonable. After Charles gives Sam his shirt, she sees his full shirtless body. Charles, all I gotta say is... 
Hit the gym, bro! Lift something! Look at Markiplier, he's already on his way to become an absolute unit. Apparently, Charles has an extra shirt for cases like these, and Sam asks him why he didn't just give her that shirt. Charles realizes how brain-dead he's being, and he just says what's done is done. Charles tells Lucy to get the shirt situation sorted out, and then he asks for the information of the delivery guy, presumably to get him fired. Bro, I really don't like this guy. I feel like the creator is trying to make it seem like he has game, but instead he comes off like Patrick Bateman. Plus, he's being unreasonable with the coffee spill situation. This man shouldn't go without a job for a simple mistake that wasn't even entirely his fault. You know what, let me just take out my anger on this guy. <laughs> Sam mentions that he was out of it because Lucy was flirting with him, and now he's trying to fire Lucy, stating that he's gonna trim the fat. Wait a minute, trim the fat? Hey, he's calling her fat! Uh, who do I call for this? Oh, I know! Hey, TikTok users, someone's being fat phobic! Sam's inner demons are telling her to fight with Charles, but instead of doing anything unnecessary, she simply stands up for Lucy. No way. Can it be? Character development? <laughs> Sam tells Charles that firing Lucy is a big waste of time and money, especially for something as trivial as flirting. Then she tells him to go put a shirt on because he's too skinny. Charles is impressed with this, telling her that she's acting like a boss. As Sam is about to leave, Sam's dad comes out of nowhere and he's thinking the worst possible situation is happening. And then he strangles Charles to death! Yes! He got what he deserved! Take that, Char- Oh, wait, it was just a daydream. <laughs> Sam's dad then takes Sam away from Charles and gives him a death stare, but Charles isn't phased when he definitely should be. My dog Sam's dad will slaughter you if you don't tread lightly. After they leave, Sam asks her dad if he's okay, since remember, his wife's in Florida. He says he's okay, but he clearly isn't. <laughs> Sam goes up to Ahmed, and after he loses at Minesweeper, she asks him how well he knows Engineer. Oh yeah, she's gonna ask him to hack the site! Wait a second, is that racist? Jeez, I hope it isn't. I, I just got monetized. <laughs> Markiplier does a bit of research on Sam and finds out she's an OG fan, as in she's basically been there since day one. He clearly feels awful about the whole thing, but before anything else can happen, Monica walks in showcasing her collab thumbnail. Markiplier explains the whole situation to Monica, and he's thinking about posting a vlog addressing the whole thing. Monica warns him that's a bad idea, and there will be big backlash if he reprimands his fans. Basically, if he addresses the situation, there will be a civil war amongst his fan base. Mark heeds her warning, but he still feels like there's something he should do. We then cut to Sam showing Umed her developer score, and she's telling him there needs to be reform in the review system. And since he's experienced with this sort of thing, she asked him. However, he can't figure this out alone, so he calls over another worker. Unfortunately, he can't figure it out either, so now it's basically a SpongeBob's brain situation. We then cut to Markiplier sending an email to Engineer to make things right, and Oh, thank goodness, that's it. If this went on any longer, my phone would have had a stroke rendering this. Alright, so it doesn't look like the webtoon got any worse. If anything, it kinda got better with these 10 chapters. Some of the newer characters are great, there were some wholesome messages, and Sam's dad was here. However, there were some bad things. All of it coming from this guy. I don't know why, but I feel like he's a big reason as to why this webtoon fell off. There's nothing going for him, and he's somehow Sam's love interest. I could be wrong, I could be right. I don't know, you guys tell me. Anyways, I think that's gonna wrap up this video. Thank you guys for watching this video in its entirety. If you guys like this video, then please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. If you guys have any video suggestions or any other webtoons I should read, then please leave it in the comments section below. And with that, I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.